the VAR show the one place for your weekly football update Hola very warm welcome to the VAR show the show which talks about all the various major football leagues in detail today we are going to continue the theme of interviews and we have a very influential figure in the Bangladesh footballing culture as of today and hopefully in the future also we have the coach of Mohammedan Sporting Club Dhaka Mr Sean Brendan Lane for those who do not know Mohammedan Sporting Club Dhaka is one of the oldest and one of the most popular football clubs in Bangladesh with a support base in all parts of the country the club currently plays in the Bangladesh Premier League and have not won the title for quite a while as so mr sean lane he is a former english professional footballer who played mostly as a striker or a midfielder for hereford united fc and derby county fc and has also played in the australian league with various clubs and also managed in the australian league with various clubs so without wasting much time i would like to first thank mr lane for coming on the show thank you and welcome to the show and i would like to begin the interview by asking the most basic of basic questions how are you and what are you doing during this pandemic period i'm i'm fine um i'm i'm really well i had two weeks in self isolation when i came back from bangladesh um but since then I've, it's been really uh quite normal here you know i've been able to go for uh run along the beach i've been able to exercise and um You know, as long as we keep some sort of uh, self isolation distancing, um, everything else is relatively normal. So it's it's good here, no problems. So uh, you have played in a lot of leagues around the world and also managed in multiple leagues in different continents. So the first yeah. question might be like, what you always get is, how is the footballing culture in Asia compared to the other continents as per your experience? Look, I think um, it surprised me in Bangladesh. um the players are very very receptive to different styles and uh, i guess i came in with my own thoughts on how i wanted the team to play and all of the players have been very receptive so a lot of teams play uh, a slower style of football because of the heat uh, that's not the way i wanted to play um so the, the my players bought into the ideas the new ideas that we brought and it, you know to date it's been you know it's been quite successful so um you know i i just think that the um the weather and the climate plays a big part in in hat the style of football in 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 uh, the different continents and um yeah, but i think most footballers are receptive to new ideas as long as they believe in what you're trying to teach them how is the infrastructure in bangladesh in terms of football look the you know the bangladesh football federation um is trying its best you know there 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 are not a lot of resources in Bangladesh most of the clubs or we don't have our own training facility um so you know good training facilities are hard to find uh, but we play on good pitches um most of the finances are you know for most of the clubs uh are by way of uh, single sponsors or or um, a few sponsors rather than you know the federation um looking after the club so you know finances can be a challenge unless you've got a a significant benefactor so uh, again this this is again maybe some questions you you get from most of the reporters and i would also like to pick on it what brought you to bangladesh like you always were in the you were in australia and in uh, in england for quite a while I mean, most of your career yeah. and again such sudden shift towards the east Yeah, look, it, it was it was a it came out of the blue. I, I had um, a friend in Bangladesh who was involved with the federation over there, um, who was a, a bit of a mentor for me while I was doing my my badges. Um, and he basically had said to me there was opportunities over there, and I didn't know whether I I wanted to leave Australia. I was I was in, you know, I had coaching jobs at the time, um, and he rang me two or three times. and on the third time it was for you know it was really for the second half of the league uh, with Mohammedan and they were struggling at the time and I thought it was a good opportunity to come in and make a difference in a short period of time um so I went over for I think it was for three maybe three or four months 
and the club escaped relegation. I really enjoyed Bangladesh. I enjoyed the culture. I enjoyed the people. I enjoyed the football. And then they asked me to come back for this season, which we started off quite well. Um, but obviously, this pandemic has, has you know stopped everything in its tracks. So, uh, how competitive is the Bangladesh Premier League? Because many people outside the country do not actually know or follow the league so much. So, could you yeah. shed some light on it? Look, the the, win, the 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 top three or four teams when they when they obviously go when they play. Um, well, the top team goes through the AFC route and, and they're generally relatively strong in that AFC competition. So our, our best teams are quite competitive, you know, in that Southeast Asian region. Um, as you go down the league, you know, the, the I guess the poorer teams are, are competitive without being great. Um, but, but definitely our top sort of four or five will be able to go and compete in, in against the best teams in most leagues in Southeast Asia. And uh, talking about the league, okay, like Dhaka Mohammedan Sporting Club is one of the biggest, if not the biggest team in the country. But they yeah. haven't been able to win the league for quite a while. So, and you have been there for around one, one and one and a half season, around that much. Uh, How would you describe the time with Mohammedan uh, Sporting Club? Look, uh, Mohammedan over the last ten years, as you said, you know, haven't won anything, um, and I think that's been down to the fact that um, you know they've 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 not had the, the financial resources to go and secure the best players. Um, we've had new clubs come in with with significant backing, like young clubs, as you know, like Bushandara Kings, like Safe Sporting Club, um, that have got a lot of finance or financial clout behind them. And um, I just think that um, over that period of time, yeah, Mohammed have lost their way a little bit, and they're in the process of uh, of, of fixing that up now. And uh, you know, the club have been fantastic since I've been there. They've been very, very supportive. The administration last year and this year have, have been, you know, right behind what we're trying to achieve. Uh, and they couldn't have been, you know, any more helpful. If I, if, you know, to be quite honest with you, so. Look, I think we're in a rebuilding phase. I think everyone's on board, and I think you'll see a a, um, a return to former glory for Mohammedan if if we're allowed to, you know, keep doing what we're doing. So also, like when you talk about Mohammedan, like you said, like uh, if you have the finances, you are generally good enough. So are you happy with the maybe the quality of players at your disposal? Look, you know, you, you can go and get the best players uh, or the most expensive players. Uh, the perceived best players in the country, but it doesn't necessarily, you know, equate to to, to you going and winning the league. Um, I've got a lot of good young players who are who are willing to learn, who are fit, hungry, and enthusiastic. I've got some good foreigners, and um, you know, and we've had some good results with with some young players um, who you know may not have the reputation but but you know they're hungry to poo- prove a point to people that, that, that they can play so um you know i don't think there's necessarily a correlation between spending the most money and being successful certainly not in bangladesh anyway okay like now we'll move on maybe to the fans and you come yeah. from a place where you know like football is like a religion you know like yeah. and players are like gods okay and you yeah. you come to a place like Bangladesh where maybe football is maybe the second game, maybe behind cricket. Yeah. How is the fan yeah. culture in Bangladesh? Um, a very good question. It's uh, we have fans and supporters for Mohammedan Sporting Club everywhere, all over the all over Bangladesh. It doesn't matter where we go. Um, people know the club. Uh, they may not know the players now like they used to. But everybody's got a soft spot for Mohammedan Sporting Club because it's the oldest club in Bangladesh, uh, and and it's had a fantastic history. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter where we go, people know the club, and they and they have a most people have a soft spot for the club. So, um, you know, the days where we used to get forty thousand people to a game are gone because now, as you say, they you know, most of the kids play cricket, but certainly the older generation um, know the club. Understand you know, the history and uh, you know there's there's a real soft spot and, a, and and sentiment for for our club. And I think most people want to see the club back doing well again. 
Okay, so now we'll move on, maybe slightly towards the tactical part. If you had to describe yeah. yourself as a coach, what would be uh, your team's uh, description? Good question. Again, uh, I think uh, I'm just trying to think what would people say about our style. I think we are high energy, aggressive, and, and we try to play. So I think we've tried to adopt again. You know, my philosophy sort of aligns with the old way that the old Mohammedan teams, where um, you know we expect to win, but we're we're hungry. You know, we we want the ball. We're aggressive, and when we have the ball, we try to play attractive football. Okay, and uh, maybe now we'll like uh, go a little bit more into uh, how you set out your team. Which one do you prefer? Yeah. This is just again just one of my personal uh, fetish, you know, of the this question. So, do you yeah. prefer man marking or zonal marking or a hybrid of both? Depends where on the pitch, you know. Um, when we're defending set pieces. I prefer man marking mostly, um, but I do have some people you know, marking zones. So probably a hybrid of both, uh, certainly from set pieces. Um, for in open play, you know, my, again I like the nearest man to to close the ball down, uh, and then uh, I guess the further you are away from the ball, then you're marking a zone or marking a space. So I guess to answer your question in simple terms, it's a hybrid of both. But um, you know, I, I don't like to drop off and give and, and give people uh, space. I like to press high and hard and be as aggressive as we can. So, uh, talking of that, do you have any coach or coaches from whom you are inspired or you take inspiration from? Uh, yes, I do. Um, you know, um, Marco Bielsa, uh, who's at Leeds United at the moment, the Argentinian coach. Uh, a lot of his philosophies I like. I like Jurgen Klopp, particularly the way he presses or get his, gets his team to press. Um, and I like, you know, obviously, you know, people like Guardiola and the way they, they keep possession. Um, so those three probably would be, you know, but particularly Bielsa is, is sort of the person that I like the most. Uh, his philosophy it sort of matches mine. But there's lots of so, good coaches and there's and, and lots of good so do, things you can take from different people. Sorry. So do you do you intend to send spies to other training ground like Bielsa? <laughs> no, no, no. Probably. I think if we can do, if I can do my job properly, then uh, looking at the other teams, I don't need to do that. I, I can watch them on television. No problem. Okay. So moving on, maybe like uh, which team or uh, club do you actually? Favor, like you know, in the world scheme of football, do you, which yeah. team do you like the most? I think it varies. Um, you know, if you if you ask me, when I was growing up in the 1980s, I used to love to watch Manchester United when Alex Ferguson was coaching. They were exciting, uh, attacking players. Um, before that, the Liverpool team in the 80s was fantastic. Uh, if you ask me now. Uh, you know, I, I like to watch Jurgen Klopp's team, and I, I like to watch Manchester City play under Guardiola. Um, I used to like uh, watching Barcelona, uh, maybe not so much the last couple of years. But um, so I, it's not any particular team; it's just players who are exciting, teams who are exciting to watch, um, and players who are exciting to watch. You know, I love I, lo I love to watch. You know. Um, Schmeichel when he was in goal. I love to watch uh, Rio Ferdinand when he was playing uh, for Manchester United. I love to watch Ronaldo. Um, I love obviously Messi. Um, so I just like to watch exciting teams and exciting players. So if you had to pick one moment from your playing career and your coaching career as your most uh, favorite or the mo a moment you would cherish throughout your life, what would that be? Well, uh, that's a well, that's a hard one. Um, there's more than one. Yeah, there'd, there'd be there's different things at different times that have that have helped me get to where I am. You know, I'll go back recently up until last last season. You know, getting Mohammedan away from relegation was was um, a massive thing. It was a, it was a massive thing for our club. Um, you know, I came halfway through last year and they they were struggling and 
to get a team of players and turn the whole thing around was was, was a massive achievement. So that was big, you know, winning winning the league uh, with Brisbane Strikers um, was it was a great achievement as well. Good players and and you know it was a big club and big expectations. So that was good, you know, moving some younger players uh, onto you know pre- professional contracts in the A League and having a help with some of those things, you know, was personally satisfying. So. You know, there's lots of different things at different times that have um, that have that have sort of you know made me feel good. But I probably you know probably that, that whole thing with Mohammedan and, and even even this year with Mohammedan, you know, I know it was early in the season. We only had six games, um, but we'd had a good run in the in the preseason cup and, and you know just watching the players grow and watching the club. Get some its identity back and a, a sense of belief back, which was yeah, that was very pleasing. So you have been in a lot of dressing rooms and with a lot of great players. So yeah. has there ever been a time where you know, like the presence of some other player or coach has uh, got any awestruck or something? <laughs> um, well, I'm quite a confident bloke, but I guess when I was a young player playing in England. I, I went to Derby County and there was three or four international footballers in there that played in the World Cup and I was still a young a young boy, probably 19 or 20 at that stage. So, you know, players like Archie Gemmell and John Robertson, that Kenny Burns that had played, you know, in the, I think it was the 1984 World Cup for Scotland. And I thought, well, I, I'm in the same changing room as these superstars. So, a lot of these, you know, a lot of people probably won't know those players now, but if you Google them, you'll see that, you know, they had huge careers, very successful players. Um so a little bit then, but not so much as I as I grew older. And um, you know, yeah, you know, the older you get, the more you understand that you know the successful players are they want the same thing as you. They want to be successful, and and they're hungry and and dynamic. And as long as you can help them be better and be part of them being better, they you know they they generally welcome you with open arms. So on that note, do you have any words for any coaches or players just starting out their career? Yeah, there's there's no shortcuts. You know, the first thing is that you have to work hard. Yeah, you know, the, there is no other way in this in this um, sport, particularly. It's a ruthless business, and if you don't work hard, then you won't have a chance. Whether that's as a coach uh, or a player, particularly as a player, um, that's the first thing. You know, the, 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 you must have a relentless pursuit um, for for hard work, and you must enjoy hard work. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, you never stop learning. That's the second thing. You know, you, you can you learn from everybody. You learn from every training session. You learn from the players around you, and I learn from other coaches, and I learn from my players still now. Uh, and you've got to be honest. You've got to be honest with yourself. You've got to be honest with the people around you, and you've got to be honest. Um, you know, you've, you've got to be able to look in the mirror every, uh, every evening when you go to bed and say, "I've I've, I've done the best I can," and and. Um, today and I'm going to do the best I can tomorrow so probably they're the things you know hard work um, honesty uh, and never stop learning so on that note I'll ask you one final question it's a very very controversial question please think and yeah. answer Sean you yeah. know your career depends on whom do you like more Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo I get asked this question a lot and I would say that I would I would take Ronaldo so, if tomorrow uh, Messi agrees to come to more than Dhaka, you won't take him. I would. Uh, you didn't ask me that. I would take him tomorrow. But no, if I had if I had to choose between Ronaldo and Messi, I would take Ronaldo. Because Why? I think like, because I like all of my teams, my players in my team to um, to attack and defend. I think Messi is fantastic attacking. But he doesn't defend, uh, whereas Ronaldo will work hard for you off the ball. He'll also score you 40, 30, 40 goals a year, but he'll also work harder defensively. So that's probably the only reason. But if someone said to me, Messi, no problem, I'd take him tomorrow. So, Mr. Lane, thank you so much for talking to us. And we wish you all the best for future campaigns. Hope you can restore Mohamedan to their former glory. And we wish you win all the possible trophies and hope we can talk again soon. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been my pleasure. I'll speak anytime. Thank you. Thank you.